Welcome back to the garage. In this video, we're going to be putting the front end back into Project Unintended Spending. If you're just now joining the series, be sure to check the link in the description below to see how we ended up here today. Now, before we get started on this, let's check out all the new parts that are going back in. Just look at that culmination of brand new or freshly refurbished parts. That is the entirety of the front end of a 1987 Audi 5000 CS Quattro. A lot of parts, all the suspension, all the brakes, all the steering components will be replaced with new basically. So let's just go down the line here. Starting at the very back, I didn't really have to do much to this, but I just cleaned it up and repainted it. Is the front sway bar. It was just a little bit rusty, a little bit greasy. And to go along with that, I painted the shackles as well as got new polyurethane bushings because the old rubber ones were starting to get cracked and very loose. So it was pretty hard to find these. They, they don't make the original rubber ones anymore. So I found these polyurethane ones and uh, I'm hoping that they'll fit up just fine. Then we have our fully refurbished strut housings with new struts, new strut boots, new wheel bearings, and various other components like the strut mount bearing and strut mount. So those are looking very nice indeed. If you go back to the video where I pulled these off, those bearings were in terrible condition. So this should improve the drivability no end. Then we have our CV axles that are freshly rebuilt, repainted, and cleaned up. Fresh grease, new boots, and that will ensure front end will last for a very long time to come. Then we have our rebuilt steering rack and repainted steering rack. Almost looks new and uh, that's about as good as you can get because you can't get these new anymore nor can you get them rebuilt so it really is up to the owner to rebuild it themselves. If you can find a rebuild kit be sure to check that video out if you need that job to be done on your car. Then we have new tie rods. Uh, the inner and outer tie rods just bought the whole assembly. These are Febby Bilstein parts, very high quality units. The tie rod ends were failed on the old ones, but, so, but I figured out I might as well just replace the whole link while we're here. And then we have new control arms. These are Delphi technology units, so pretty high quality parts. New ball joints are in there, no, new inner bushings. It's actually fairly affordable at only about $25 a side. Then we have new brake discs. These are surprisingly difficult to find. And I've tried to find ones that were already coated and I couldn't do it. They just aren't made anymore or they're completely back ordered with no ETA at all. So I found these, I think they're Dynamic Friction brand. And uh, I decided to coat them with a zinc paint myself. And I think they turned out pretty well, look good on the car. And then we have new brake pads to go up with those that have the brake lining sensors with them. And then we have refurbished brake caliper brackets and calipers themselves. And I say refurbished just because I cleaned them off and repainted them, but uh, they didn't need rebuilt or anything. They're actually in really good shape otherwise. The, uh, the pins slide freely, re-greased all of those. And then I have new brake lines for the front calipers. Now, unfortunately, these look like they're a little bit short and I'm not sure why, but that is a difficulty I've been having with this car just all around. I've had to return so many parts and get different ones because they just don't fit right or they actually fit a different variation of the Audi 5000. And it's pretty frustrating. Unfortunately, these cars basically disappeared from roads leasing in the United States before internet came around and you could order parts online so there's not a great parts fish for these things or a, a parts matching capability when you go to a lot of the parts sites so <laughs> you end up ordering a lot of the wrong parts so we'll just have to see that those actually fit up otherwise we may have to use the old lines until I can find something that does fit so that's everything that needs to be done on this car everything just needs to be put back in now there's a couple of jobs that I've already gone ahead and done and, and one of them is related to the rear suspension. I did install bump stops on the rear shocks as well as the bellows cover shield type cups that go on there. They were missing on the shocks and I also installed new upper lateral links just so the rear ends fresh and the ball joints back there are in good shape. Moving up to the front of the car, something else I did was replace the alternator. 
So in a previous video, I did a test of a diagnostic tool that tests your battery and starting and charging capabilities. And it turns out the alternator was in very poor condition and hardly charging. It was charging about 13 volts when it needs to be closer to 14 or so. So I've got a new or remanufactured alternator in there. And then lastly, I had to replace the clutch master cylinder. I just noticed it was leaking when I was under the car disconnecting the steering wheel shaft from the rack and pinion assembly. The little nipple on the end that the reservoir hose feeds into had broken off and had basically drenched the carpet in the car with brake fluid. So I had to replace one of those because you can't just buy that little plastic nipple. So I went ahead and did that as well. So this thing is now ready to hit the road. Assuming we can get all of this stuff installed. Speaking of which, there's a lot of work to be done here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And there we are. The entire front end of this car is now refreshed basically brand new throughout here. And I'm not gonna lie, this did take me about two and a half days to put all right, but it is now there and looking very nice if I do say so myself. Not one inch of this front suspension hasn't been touched. I have gone ahead and changed the oil and filter, but those brake lines in fact work just fine. I did end up removing the little middle bracket that mounts to the strut. Um, because the longer brake lines actually routed through there and are secured, but these aren't long enough to use that. And I didn't want it to get accidentally hung up on one of these, so I just removed those brackets. Look at those new tie rods in there. Now, obviously I will have to get this car aligned, but I did match the length of the original tie rod, so at least it's close and I can at least drive it over. Gosh, when you step back, wow. Almost like brand new, almost. There's new control arms, new newly rebuilt CV axles. We have our new pinch bolts holding the lower control arm and ball joint in place. New brake pads with new wear sensor there. Then on the top side, I've flushed the entire hydraulic system or steering and, and brake power system with new CHF 11S power steering fluid or hydraulic fluid, it's the green stuff. You can see deep back in there is the rebuilt steering rack. You can hardly see it, but it's it really pays off to paint things up so that you know you've been in there and something is rebuilt and refreshed. You can see the tie rod ends kind of going in there. Getting those high pressure lines connected back there by the firewall was a real challenge, but it's all paid off. You see the top of the struts, fresh hardware and repainted hardware. Looks nice. And then while I was in here, I went ahead and replaced the distributor cap. It was looking a little rough, so I got a new one put on there. And then the new clutch master cylinder is all flushed, bled, and working great. So new brake fluid and clutch fluid throughout. And over here, similar story, everything fit up nicely. I will say it was a challenge getting that sway bar into the lower control arm. I did have to use ratchet straps, two ratchet straps to kind of help locate and pull things into place. That was really something you just had to make up as you go. New pads and wear sensor there. One additional challenge that I wasn't expecting when putting this all back together was that I had to do an emergency brake caliper rebuild. Luckily I didn't have to order any new parts, but I couldn't get the pistons to push all the way in to accept these new pads. So I had to pop the pistons out and clean the bores and clean the pistons themselves. And uh, then suddenly the pistons were able to go all the way in. So something I wasn't expecting, definitely added about two hours to my that reassembly process. And then on the ABS sensors, the wire coming down from the wheel well there, I've rewrapped in some of that fancy wiring harness tape. It was originally kind of a rubber insulated set of wires, but that rubber insulation just crumbled. And I didn't want it exposed to the elements, so I wrapped it in that covering. And I think it looks pretty nice. It should last a pretty long time. 
And then back here, I went ahead and changed the rear differential fluid since I had everything apart. You can see those new bump stops on the rear shocks, new upper control arms back here, new brake lines and all that. Um, the fuel tank, I think it was in the second video I made, I, I put a patch in place on the bottom of the fuel tank and the original patch just didn't hold up. And in fact, I tried it three times and it kept leaking after a couple days. So I've done a more permanent patch where I took a 16 gauge sheet of steel and used the two part JB Weld epoxy, the full strength stuff, cleaned up real well. And Sandra said JB Weld with that plate and I held it in place with a jack for like 35 hours. And it seems to have held up pretty well. It's now been about two months now with no leaks. So hopefully that will last a very long time. So that is looking pretty darn complete if I do say so myself. This was a ton of work. I spent a good four days kind of getting everything ready and actually reassembling this car, but I think it's worth it in the end. Now all that I need to do is just throw the wheels back on and get it back on the ground. All right, now flash forward about two weeks and guess what? The car is still looking like it's in the air. Truth is I've put the wheels back on and driven the car about 80 miles. I got it aligned and it actually drives really, really well. However, that shakedown period uncovered a few more issues that I needed to take care of, which I've just already gone ahead and addressed at least most of them. Let's start off with the front of the car here. So those front brake lines that I was questioning the length of, sure enough, were too short in the fully extended strut position like this. When you turn the steering to the lock, you could tell that the lines were being stressed and pulled to the extreme. So I was able to find the correct length of front brake lines, which means I was able to use the original brackets on the strut assembly, as you can see, and now everything is perfect. And moving to the back of the car, as I was driving it around the block, I noticed quite the growling noise in the back of the car. Now I didn't notice this before because the front of the car was growling so badly. And what was wrong? Well, the rear wheel bearings, both of the rear wheel bearings were also shot. They didn't have any side to side play like the front did, but you could definitely tell sound wise that they were bad. So these were not as bad as the fronts to remove, but they were still a battle to remove from the hub assembly. Now removing the hub assembly is actually pretty straightforward, not a whole lot of difficulty there, thankfully, but I definitely had to put my 12 ton shop press to the test, getting those large wheel bearings out of there. They're the same size as the front. I don't know why there's so much conflicting information about what size wheel bearings these cars should have. Basically all the parts stores that I was finding said that this car has 75 millimeter outer diameter double row bearings and that's incorrect. They're actually 82 millimeter outer diameter double row bearings front and rear. So I ended up buying like a lot of the wrong size bearings until I found out that these have the larger bearings and they don't fit any other cars other than these C3 and I think the Audi 90s that were came later. So you're not gonna find them locally, basically. You will have to jump online and wait for them to be delivered. So those have now been changed out uh, left and right in the back. I took the opportunity to actually clean up some hardware, repaint them, repaint the hub assembly, so everything looks nice and fresh. So you can see the rear shock and everything looks nice. It all comes together. Now keen eyes will also notice another difference back here. The wheel well liner is now in place. So the car didn't have them on there. I don't know where they went. A lot of things have just kind of gone missing on this car apparently over the years, but I was able to source some aftermarket ones. They had to come from Latvia. I ordered left and right pair and it came out to be about a hundred bucks, but definitely worthwhile because you don't want rocks getting slung up in here, especially against your fuel filler neck and all of that. You don't want to keep that stuff well protected. It also serves as sort of a sound insulation layer as well. Now I did have to put a little bit of Gorilla Tape here because they cracked in shipping, but I didn't want to battle with the seller trying to get new ones sent to me because it took a month for these things to arrive. But I'm very happy. This now gives the rear wheel 
well a completed look before you could see body color through the wheel well and that's usually an indication that something's missing you should never see body color really when you poke through the wheel well so luckily i still had all the mounting bolts there's only four mounting points that hold these things in so it's actually pretty simple to install they did not come pre-drilled but fortunately they're at the bottom here so you can actually see and line up and drill uh, accordingly now moving to the very back of the car something that's been missing since the beginning is a rear muffler and one is now installed and it's definitely helped make the exhaust sound a bit more tuned and less raspy so that was a nice addition as well i did not weld that in myself i took it to a shop and they did a really nice job installing that i may eventually get a an exhaust tip that looks more original uh, we'll see this doesn't look too bad uh, actually it looks fairly original itself and yeah the rear end of this car let me tell you looks very nice indeed i can't even believe how far this has come from where we started incredible and going to the engine bay there's a few things that have changed in here or will need to change the first is the brake master cylinder now if you remember a few videos back i replaced the rear calipers and it turns out they weren't actually a direct replacement for the ones i removed the pistons were two millimeters larger in diameter on both sides which meant that the master cylinder that the car had was a bit underpowered and the pedal would have too much travel and i just didn't like it so i found out they made a different master cylinder for the touring package or the heavy duty braking package for the audi 5000 i think it came on the wagons or the avants and uh, luckily i found one for sale it was on rock auto a remanufactured one and it lo and behold is a little bit larger and fits perfectly and has the right volume for those rear calipers so i installed that now the brakes are very tight the pedal travels very short and sturdy and the car has proper brakes once again now during my 80 mile shakedown period i decided to turn on the heater because we're moving into fall and it's starting to get colder and it's just nice to have warm air coming out the vents and it was at that time that i realized a few things about the hvac system now i haven't really tested this hvac system since i bought the car even after i replaced the heater core i really haven't been messing with it the car's been up on jack stands and i've just been fixing stuff so really this is the first time i've ever tried to use the hvac system after doing a bunch of work and i basically wasn't getting any air out of the center vents or through the floor vents it was all coming out the defrost vents and no matter the buttons i pushed on that control mechanism it just wouldn't shift where the air was coming on and it didn't seem like it was changing the temperature of anything certainly no hot air was coming out and i was like what in the world is going on here i put a brand new heater core in it that's not clogged what is going on so i had to pull down the glove box and get at the heart of this electronic climate control system and over here in the corner is this box that has a servo motor that moves a flap inside of that HVAC box inside of the dashboard there but it also has a series of vacuum solenoids that change the flap position inside of that HVAC box well as it turns out none of those vacuum solenoids were holding a vacuum I had to take that thing out of there and test each and every one and I messed with them and I I sprayed lubricant in there and eventually after probably four hours of messing with it i got them to finally hold a vacuum so not only now are the flaps working much better but now there's not a vacuum leak in the engine bay and actually now the engine idles so much better who would have thought that a vacuum leak that would affect the engines running would be under the dashboard in the interior of the car not even in the engine bay but in the interior of the car so kind of the jury's out on whether or not my fix there is going to hold up over time but fingers crossed it will because guess what you can't find the parts anymore so if that does not work i will have to figure out an alternate solution and rig up my own vacuum solenoids to make that system work but as of right now it does appear to be working as part of my hvac diagnosis I found that I had a few very old vacuum lines here in the engine bay that operate the heater control valve 
and kind of come off this other vacuum line down here. So I've replaced all those with my silicone vacuum hose here. But as part of doing this, I found out that the heater control valve, which is located down in here, right there, leaks. Of course it leaks. After I've done the entire cooling system, I find out there's a point where it's leaking. And the reason I didn't see it before is because the vacuum line going to it wasn't pulling a vacuum because of the situation going on with the HVAC box and then the brain of it under the dashboard. So, so long story short, I have ordered a new heater control valve and we'll get that installed once it arrives. It's not a major coolant leak, but it is a leak all of the same. And then I've started having difficulty starting the car. And viewers that have been with me the whole time know that the ignition switch or whatever's going on there has always been a problem with this car. And it's even got that bypass switch there on the dashboard to get the engine to start, turn the starter motor. Well, suddenly that bypass switch stopped working as well. And I think it was directly tied to the temperature outside getting very cool. We've had a couple 30 and 20 degree Fahrenheit days and suddenly none of the starting system worked at all, not even the bypass system. So I had to get under the car at a 20 degree day and start rooting around with the wiring up here on the starter motor. And I was testing for voltage and I had 12 volts at the main power wires and everything like that. I even jumped another hot wire to the starter solenoid trying to get it to start and it just wouldn't turn over. So I figured out that the starter solenoid is bad on this thing. And if you smack it with a hammer and a screwdriver, it will start. So I've ordered another starter solenoid and it should be here soon and I can take care of that. And it should be good to go for a while. The rest of the starter motor appears to be very good. And then last but not least, the rubber gasket for the rear trunk lock is now there. It's been installed. It wasn't there before. You had kind of a nasty little rust ring starting there. Luckily no actual rust, but now this looks nice and it completes it, these little details it's really going to bring this car back from the brink and all credit to that one goes to mrs practical enthusiast she did that little restoration job it'll be nice when we can start tackling more cosmetic fixes on this car but we still have some mechanical and electrical things to iron out and we'll do those in future videos but i've got to say look at it it is on the ground resting on its own wheels Isn't it starting to look the business? This car looks refreshed already, even with all the little cosmetic faults still present. It sits proper on its correct sized wheels. No goofy OEM plus stuff going on here. This is how the car should look. A true 80s icon through and through. So that's all I've got for this one, but there's still a lot to come. Lots more fixes to do on this Audi 5000 before I can consider it complete. Until then, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all again next time.